Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're going to work on one that we did as a pandemic project preview the other day. Say that three times fast. This is the Finor Ahab. It comes from Chris in uh, North Carolina. And Chris's note says that this has just been tight pretty much since he's owned it. And uh, I don't know what that is uh, causing it, but we're going to try and find out for him. We're going to try and take this reel apart. We'll show you how it was made. And... Uh, see if we can correct the tightness in it. This it says it's a size 16. It just says Finor uh, Ahab and I don't see any other designation by it. Uh, just Conquer the Sea. So Finor uh, is a company that's been around a long time. It was founded in the late 1930s down in Miami, Florida by a, a uh, two people uh, and I forget their names but they one name started with the fin, and the other name started with the nor, and that's why it's hyphenated. Uh, nor would like, nor would might have been the second one. I don't know. So we're going to start by just taking some of these off. We're going to start by thanking our first responders and essential personnel that are trying to keep us safe and trying to restore us to health uh, during this pandemic. There, without their efforts, we would be in far worse shape than uh, than we are, and it's been pretty tough times for everybody but particularly the first line uh, responders. Thank you for everything that is that you do. All right, there's a uh, drag adjuster knob in the, in the top here inside the spool. This has uh, always been a little bit questioning in terms of what this is. I believe that the wings on this is simply to help you tighten and loosen this knob by giving you a little bit of extra effort or leverage as you do this. But uh, other than that, this just spins. So I think that everything that we do is in here. And if I recall, this reel has a giant cork uh, drag washer underneath here, which is really controlling all of the action. So let's see if we can get that off. We can. Up oh, there it is. So we have a cork washer under here. And one of the things I see is we have a lot of sand. There's a good amount of sand in here. That's never a good sign. Uh, I don't know if that's what's causing it to bog down. And I don't know when Chris got this reel. If he got it uh, you know, recently and it's been slow. Or if it was slow right out of the box. But you can see there's a lot of sand there. And this is your quirk uh, drag washer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to pause the video right here. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it in a pail of fresh water. You will be surprised how much of that sand is going to come off just by it sitting in the the fresh water and just by kind of having it uh, float around for a little bit while we service the rest of the reel. So I'm going to stop this for a moment and we'll be right back. Okay, so that didn't take very long, did it? Now, I didn't get the schematic for this reel. Uh, this reel is made in the USA. Finor is now a, a part of the... Uh, the W.C. Bradley Company, which is Zebco, Rhino, uh, Quantum, and uh, Van Stahl. And uh, this one has been on the uh, targeting between the Quantum and the Van Stahl. So it's kind of coming towards their upper end. I do notice we're missing a plate here. Um, that's never a good sign. Something fell out there. But this one was made in the U.S. So I don't know when it was made. And I wish I could give you more information on that. But the current line of the Finor Offshore series for the fishing reels is very nice. And uh, if you uh, are in the market for one, you should check them out. Okay, I'm going to take the handle off. I checked the other side here. That's why I pulled that button. I just wanted to see if this was a through screw handle or a um, uh, one that mounted from the one side and it simply mounts from this side. There is some uh, some signs of wear on this, so it's not uh, like it hasn't been used, and we, we knew it was used because we saw the uh, the sand in the top of the spool there. So I see three screws right now, and I see what I call a half case. There's a line here that's the top of the side case. Uh, if that if you have a side case that stops here, you can remove the side case without removing the rotor first. That's something you should check on every reel that you go to repair. If you cannot uh, find that line or if you see that there's a line up top here, then that means you have to remove the rotor 
before you can remove the side plate. So in this case, I'm going to take the three screws out and we'll see where we go from there. Kind of playing it a little bit by ear. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't have the schematic. I believe I can find the schematic at Mike's Real Repair. Uh, but um, if I get in trouble, I certainly will. But in the meantime, I do what I recommend everybody do. And that is take pictures along the way. Because if you're taking pictures, you'll have reference points as to how the reel came apart. And that will certainly help you when you go to put it back together again. So this is a catch here. It's uh, the long throw of the um, axle shaft. And uh, interestingly enough, the first reel I ever learned how to fish on, a Senator Pacifica, was uh, had similar design. Not, uh, not the case, but it had this little thing kind of coming through it here. All right, I took the screws out. They were all the same size. That's why I was laying them on my table. I wanted to make sure that they were the same size both in width and they also um, had the same thread patterns to them. Once you verify that, you can come and uh, just put them into a parts tray. Now I'm going to flip the uh, arm out of the way. And I like, like it when it goes front and back. That way, if there's anything here intersecting, uh, you'll have uh, have it out of the way. Again, I don't, don't know for certain how this is set up. Okay, we have a um, nice metal side plate here. This is our uh, crosswind assembly. We have a crosswind gear, block, axle shaft. There's some dirty grease, but uh, well, there's some stuff going on in there that might cause it to bog down. I'm noticing that there's some pretty heavy uh, chunks of grease there. So again, sometimes it's just a matter of cleaning it up that there's nothing wrong with the reel. It just needs to be cleaned and uh, that's what we'll do. So I'm going to rotate the reel so that I can get down. And, and again, that's pretty heavy grease there. It, there's a good chance that that's what's causing this thing to slow. But until we uh, take it all apart and clean it up, we just won't know. That crosswind block anchors the axle shaft and it's held in place by a small flat headed screw. I'm going to put that right into my parts tray. Now I can remove the axle shaft. And we're stuck. So, oops, there we go. I wasn't quite sure what was happening with that. There's a lot of grease on this axle shaft. And grease is the friend of everybody, except when it dries, and it's nobody's friend. So let's get that out of the way. And this is your click mechanism that we were hearing as the spool was turning. That's that's the clicker. So I'm just going to put a drop of, uh, actually, a little bit of dried grease on that as well. So let's get that out of the way. So one side of this is the click mechanism here. The other side of it is the face for the drag washer. Let's put a drop of oil onto that click mechanism. I'll put that in the parts tray. And then we can go ahead and, and clean this stuff up. So I'm going to put a little towel here just so you can see it better. This would be your crosswind block. Oh yeah, I think that's Without going too far, I'm going to think this is probably what's causing it all. It's just a bunch of, of dried grease in there. We'll take that out first. Now we should be able to remove the main gear. And again, we see some accumulation of grease there. There's a drive gear that's separate. Most of the time you'll see a main gear that'll have that crosswind gear on the back side of this. This one is separate from that. And then we have the crosswind gear itself. I guess you call the other one the crosswind gear drive, perhaps. Then we can take our crosswind gear off. And then I'm going to take the top off here. I guess we can do a little bit of house cleaning first. So let's grab another paper towel. See if we can't get the old grease off of this. And I like to start with soft stuff first. If I can clean the grease with the paper towel, that's my preference. If I need more assist, then I'll kind of move up the scale of abrasion, if you will. But uh, paper towels, 
some WD-40 or penetrating oil to loosen that grease, some Q-tips, anything that's uh, kind of soft in nature is my first choice. I've had some of this stuff that has gotten so thick and gummy that I've had to use a scraper, like a little screwdriver or something to get in there and get some of that out. The good news is I'm not seeing the sand inside the reel. I was only seeing the sand inside the spool. So that's encouraging. And we have a little bit of stuff in there, so let's get that stuff out of there. That's pretty clean. Let's check that burring. That burring seems to be doing okay. There's a little bit of grease and that aligned here, so we'll make, use that small micro screwdriver there, get that out of the way. And then we can just uh, put some oil. I'm using fishing reel oil here. I'm using Real X, which is an aftermarket oil, just to make sure that that stays lubricated. I'll put that into my parts tray. Next we'll clean the crosswind gear. I want to check a couple of things. These gears are nice and solid. Again, we have some dried grease on that gear, so that can always get in the way as well, kind of like a speed bump. We also have the dried grease on the back here. So I don't know if this is going to solve it, Chris, but uh, it's going to go a long way to smoothing out the performance because this stuff is pretty, pretty tight here, as most can see. I'll clean out the inside of that anchor point there. So you want to check a couple of things while you're working on the gear. You want to check the teeth to make sure that they're not clogged, but you also want to make sure that they're not bent or chipped in any regard. This one is okay, so I'll put that into my tray. Then we'll come over one more time on this nice heavy gear here. I'm just going to do the same thing here. We're just going to clean this up. I think I'll use a little bit of that penetrating oil again. I'll be a little bit of a, a grease buster there. Use my paper towel to get some of that excess off the shaft. I'm going to use a brush here, get the grease out of there. Doing the same thing, checking the channels here to uh, make sure that they're not clogged either. Okay, and we have our little crosswind interface gear here, the transit gear, whatever. whatever that, word is. I'm going to do the same thing here. Check all the teeth. Okay, we have a bearing on the shaft here. It's spinning, but it's also kind of locked in here. I just want to see if there's a mechanical lock on that or if it's just kind of stuck. There's a mechanical lock. Okay, so I've, I've uh, had to work this bearing off. I used the penetrating oil on there and let it sit. That's why we paused the camera for a little bit. And I uh, was able to just keep pulling on it until I finally got this thing free. That could be, again, another reason why it bogs a little bit. Here's this shim spacer. It belongs between the bearing and the main gear. And again, we can see a lot of junk on the main gear behind this bearing. So all this dirt tends to take its toll on fishing reels. And you want to just make sure that you can get these as clean as you can if you're, if you're having that kind of a problem. And you can see all the dirt just laying on this paper towel here, which is kind of another reason why I was sort of using that just as an illustration point as we, uh, as we work this. Okay. I think we're satisfied that the main gear is clean. Uh, I'm going to flood this bearing. The bearing does work. It was just tight, and I think it was tight because of the underlying grease there. This one spins fine. Go ahead and put that back in there as well. Yeah, it's a little bit more sitting here on this main gear on the shaft, so let's go ahead and take that off too. 
I'm going to pay our attention up top then. It's a nice solid gear. It may even be CNC cut. I'm not quite sure. All right. If we come up top here, again, we can see the, the older greases sitting there. That's held in place here with a set screw. And this one I'm just going to kind of put on the side of my desk here. I don't expect it to go too far and be too long. I have a traditional nut that's coming off. It's a 14 millimeter nut, all full of grease, dried grease. I'm taking that off in the traditional counterclockwise direction. And we should simply be able to pull up on the rotor to remove that. Put those two there. While I have the rotor off, I'm going to put some grease into the, the sides. Uh, actually, oils. The bail sides and on the bail roller. Just going to let that sit. Work that in. Make sure that it's nice and loose. So this one has what I call the hammer release. There's nothing underneath here that's going to be a bail trip. It's going to hit the stud on the back here, and that's what's going to flip it. And a lot of folks that own these reels uh, simply like to uh, take this bail and trip it manually instead of whacking it against this post all the time. So this is a good place to take a picture. If you have this reel, you want to pay attention to make sure that it goes back on the right way. So the first thing is that there's a plastic carrier here that sits on the anti-reverse override. And it has a, a bearing underneath it here. And again, if we're looking for culprits for slow or poor performance, this one's kind of caked up here. You can see the difference. And this is a roller bearing for the anti-reverse. And I just had one of the rollers come out. So be careful when you're, you're working with this assembly. The best thing to do when you get these, I'm going to just put this in a small cup because they are uh, jumpy. Actually, I'm just going to put it right on, on here. If you get that kind of a situation, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can work on that to clean it up as best you can. And when you go to reinstall, reinstall with the using grease as a glue. So use fishing reel grease there. Okay, there's three um, Phillips head. This is where a um, Schematic would have helped because I believe that's going to be a single piece there that's holding that anti-reverse clutch. And if it is, we'll just go back and reinstall it into that carrier. But there's three Phillips head screws here. One of them's hiding underneath that little click. So you want to move that click out of the way as you go to open up the last one. And I'm going to apologize if you can't see this on the camera. This should also enable us to remove the pinion gear, which in this cleaning here is, is part of what we need to do. And for whatever reason, this little screw is being difficult. Okay, this whole thing should come out now, and that will enable us to clean the body. This is the carrier for the anti-reverse. Got a big old bearing here, kind of like the, uh, the pen reel bearings. Got some clogged up pinion gear, so let's just get to work again. Take that paper towel. I'm going to use a pick here, and with that pick, I'm just going to slide everything through the channels there to get rid of that old grease. If this was really stuck grease, I would use the 
WD-40 or another penetrating oil to dissolve it, but it's, this stuff seems to be cooperating. Then again, I can use the brush, brush that onto the towel here so that I have a clean channel. On the bottom of that, I'm going to wipe right down there, I'm in good condition with that. I'm going to flood the bearing, I already tested the bearing, I'm going to flood it with oil. And then we're, uh, we can set it up again. A little bit of grease onto the inside of the pinion gear here. And the bearing is going to ride. The bearing goes on. Mix it and it tends to bend it just enough that it doesn't slip and slide through. Okay, with our case clean then, it's time to start reassembly. I'm going to start with the um, anti-reverse block here. Let's go put that back together. Just clean that last little bit out there. Now, it's important to note, on this block you have two pieces. You have a a circular piece on the bottom and a hex piece on top that's the top so when it goes to sit in the case here that uh, that rounded part sits in a round section below and the hex sits up here if you put it on backwards interestingly enough you're going to have a, a anti-reverse that runs backwards so I've put some blue grease onto the anti-reverse clutch I'm going to put that right into the case just like that there is a um, little washer that I pulled out that's going to go on there. And then we can install that over our bearing and the two little washers for the anti-reverse. I'm kind of holding that collar. I don't want to pop anything with that at the moment. And then we can take our grease and grease up that, that uh, pinion gear below, which we've cleaned. And this is ready for install up top. So just kind of hold that together like a sandwich. If you're looking to mate the pin there with the slot on the uh, override. Get that positioned properly in the case. And one of those washers seems to just want to fight me. There you go. And then just make sure that that hex is pushed down and that that hex is flush with the case the way we found it. And that should work. So let's just give it a test there. Or probably an override. Yep, there you go. We're, we're testing where it's coming this way and the override works even better. Okay, I'm going to take my three hold down screws then. Two of them will be relatively easy to put in. That last one we got to sneak in under that, uh, that drag click kind of mechanism there. And we can put the rotor on and move on. Okay, one more. And yes, I do see that little guy there. That goes on top of the ferrule there. All right, last one. We're going to try and get this out of the way. You probably won't see this screw going in very well. If you don't, I apologize. It's kind of one of these things where it's not, uh, it's camera shy, if you will. All right, there we go. All right, all three of those are in. Just a good test again. Let's go put that rotor on then. We've greased everything on that rotor or oiled it. Burning slots, the line roller. Now we're just trying to line up the the slots on the rotor here so that it can go down. There we go. Oops, there you go. This goes back on. A little shim washer there. Now we can put it back on. This came off the traditional way, so it goes back on the traditional way. Clockwise. Came off in a kind of clockwise manner. Let's tighten that up. It's a 14 millimeter nut for those of you playing at home. Once it's snug, I like to give it a spin, make sure it's working. And we've got the tie down screw here. And that's the top end. Go ahead and put that on. 
And we'll go down to the bottom and assemble that case. And we'll see if it makes any difference or if it's just a tight wheel. But we did find a lot of dirt and grease and grime and junk in there, so there you go. Alright, next up is this uh, crosswind gear. I've got some grease on there already, so let's just make sure. You want to grease everything. The ferrule that's going to ride on that little stud, the teeth that are going to be driven by the back side of the, I'll call it an idler gear, the face, because the crosswind uh, block is going to run on that. There's a flat side here. It might be hard to see with the grease I just put on, but there's a flat side here. It's not completely round. Look in your case. You're going to see a bump. There's a little flat side right here. So when you're going to put this on, you need to make sure that you get the flat side in. Otherwise, the gear will not ride. I'm not sure if I even have that in. Sometimes it's easier just to push that out. Comes in backwards like that. Seat that uh, in there properly. There you go. Then go ahead and put that back on. And when you put that back on, you'll know you got it right because you're flush right across the face of this. If you weren't flush across the face, your crosswind block would not ride properly. So speaking of that crosswind block, let's go get that now. This is the block. We've already oiled the uh, bearing there. I'm just going to grab my brush again and put some, some grease in on that. Making sure I get grease in that channel because that's what the stud is going to ride on. Grease on the sides because that's what's going to ride up and down in the case. This needs to slide under. Okay, with the main gear installed then, we want to grab the axle shaft. Now this is uh, appears to be in good condition. This is where that cork is going to ride on this side. Some, some light residual from the cork I'm going to guess over here, but we'll check it out. Yep, I, I just came off with some light steel wool and buffing. So that's a nice shiny surface. That's what it needs to be. So we come through the top now. I'm going to put a little bit of light grease onto the axle shaft. Yep, looks like there might be some scarring on there. Let me just check. All right. All right, now we can put the wipe that off. Put a little light coating of grease on there. Don't put too much on. As you come through that pinion gear, if you got too much on, it's just going to accumulate it at the top of the nut. That's probably why it was dry up there before. All right, and then we're going to insert that through the pinion gear and then through the cross line block below. So we align that hole in the center there with the hole in the crosswind block and axle. And we can put our short screw in here. Tighten that up. And if you like, you can put a drop of oil into the bottom carrier there as we go back. Okay. We had that bearing off. Let's go put that bearing back on. We already have the shield on it. We've oiled that bearing. We've let it soak. So let's press that bearing down. Now it's time to take the side plate. It should just slip on nicely. We have those three side plate screws. And we're getting very close to a uh, the finished project here and we're getting close to a test drive to make sure that it's operable and we certainly want to hope that uh, it freed it up a little bit. There's new grease, there's new oils, the dirt's out of this. But if it's tight, there's only one answer left there and that would be a bent axle shaft. But that axle shaft went in easy. So I don't, uh, I'm going to kind of say that that's not it for now. But if, uh, if there is an issue, that probably would be it. And we would be able to tell that uh, as we crank on the stroke itself. There would be a point where it would catch and it's normally towards the top of the stroke because the uh, that's where it tends to bend when the, the spool is all the way up and you have a lot of torsion on it from fighting a big fish or something. And these reels are capable of fighting big fish so there's a possibility that uh, that could be what happens there. All right, one more. Put our 
handle on. Put the drag up top. Handle. That's smoother, but we're going to have to leave it to Chris to tell me whether it is or not. Okay then, so we're down to the final piece here. We've got the corks that's going to go on. And now I'm going to stop my camera again and I'm going to go get that spool that had the sand in it. And we should be clean. Well, I wish I could have showed you the sand that was in the bucket and how clean it is as a... Uh, just from floating out. It, uh, it just works its magic that way. There seems to be just a little bit left. I'm going to grab a cotton swab just right it behind the channel. See if I can't just get that little... There's one or two pieces. It doesn't even look like sand. It looks like something, some other kind of dirt there. Yeah, we're nice and clean now. All right, so that goes on. The adjuster knob goes on. And this one goes fishing again. And this is where somebody's going to have to tell me. I'm just not that familiar with these Ahabs. But it, somebody told me if, if this button does nothing more than just help you kind of grab leverage as you're turning that knob to tighten down on that. And that makes sense. I didn't see anything in the spool at all. This cork drag. I don't put anything on cork drags. They've been around forever. Oh, I got everything wet here. But uh, if somebody knows differently, let me know. Just clean that up a little bit. There you go. We are locked down there. And like I tell most folks, if you get locked down, unlock it. So that you take the pressure off the drive. So there we go. I think this is a lot smoother. Chris, you're going to have to tell me, but I think this is about as smooth as this wheel is going to get for all of the moving parts that are in there. And uh, this is the bump guard again. It's going to come over here and it's going to smack this thing. And a lot of folks don't like that, so what I like to do is just trip that bell manually and uh, save the uh, wear and tear on the bang factor. All right, well, so there we go. There's the Finor Ahab, or the Ahab by Finor. It's a size 16 reel. I would put that in the 70 or 80 class. It's definitely meant for big fish in the salt water or uh, catfishing or the like, where you're going to have a lot of heavy action out there and need a heavy piece of machinery. We saw those solid gears. This one says it holds 250 yards of 16 pound test or 180 of 20 pound test. So that gives you an idea of what the, uh, the reel was made for. And I hope you've enjoyed it, even though it seems it's like it's a little cut up in the, uh, the video itself. So uh, if you like it, please indicate that. If you have any questions on this reel or any other reels, please leave them in the comments and I'll try and get a response to you. Uh, if you like this and want to see more, please subscribe. And finally, if you have a reel that needs repair and uh, you're interested in having me provide that service, send me an email on the, uh, uh, with the information on the business card that follows and I'll be happy to provide you with the re real repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.